Hi everyone, it's James here from Pro Tools Expert and you join us in a most beautiful little bedroom studio uh, belonging to this chap here. This is Patrick Johnson. Great to meet you. Great, thanks for having me. No problem at all. Uh, thanks for agreeing to be grilled on camera. <laughs> of course, yeah. Um, just just to give some background to the, the community on you and sort of what sort of stuff you do, um, how did you get started in the craziness that is the music industry? Um, well, I, I studied uh, film composition at Berklee College of Music in the States, in mm -hmm. Boston. And so um, I, that's, I figured out pretty early that that's kind of what I wanted to do was film scoring. Um, and so after I you know, applied to that school, I got in, fortunately. And then uh, I decided I would move to, to the UK to be closer to my family. I'm half Swedish, half Polish. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yeah, I came here and straight away I thought, you know, there's a kind of a gap in my knowledge, which is the more technical side of things like mixing and recording and stuff. So I actually applied to work in a recording studio. Unfortunately, got the job there. A studio we'd have heard of, or it, it's called, it was it doesn't exist anymore. It was called Ignition Studios. Right. At the so time. many, unfortunately, have lost yeah. its gone. Yeah. Um, hopefully, you know, there's going to be a recovery on that front. But, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so I got in. I got in there, and that was great. And uh, was there for must have been three years, and learned, you know, what compression is and what EQ is and all this kind of stuff, which I'd kind of been doing to some degree before, but not kind of knew on more. Um, how to do it properly mm. <laughs> and um, and then that studio closed down and then so it was time to kind of figure out what I wanted to do so I I, um, I was always scoring short films on the side and stuff with people who I had had relationships directors I had relationships with from from the states mm -hmm. and so I um, I kept doing that all along and then kind of I started to get more films projects here and uh, gradually I was able to transition into where I'm doing it full-time now and I've been doing that for about five years now. Very cool. I mean, the thing I like about the way the industry is going, n nobody likes to see the studios vanish and, and sort of get sucked up and, and turn into what have been dubbed um, luxury apartments. Yeah. But there is now this move to what I think Mike has called the cottageization of the industry. The fact that we don't actually need huge consoles and, and huge studios to make amazing film soundtracks, hit records, whatever. Yeah. Um, and it's great to see in this part of North London, we're literally a stone's throw from the Emirates um, Stadium, Arsenal's home, fo Arsenal Football Club's home ground. Um, and we're in a, you know, a, a moderate, modest sized bedroom yeah. with an amazing um, set up, loads of toys, loads of cool stuff. Uh, I think it's fairly safe to say you like your controllers, don't you? Yes, yeah. Um, yeah, so it is, it, it's a really small place and you know, but I, I, I feel like, um, if you just kind of gradually keep adding little bits and pieces, then, you know, there's definitely a, a place for the bigger studios and I still use them and stuff, but I can get 90% of the work done here, to be honest. And I use these controllers all the time. Like I have, you know, to the left of me, I have the chaos pad in front of me, I have the console one. And, um, you know, then I've got this new thing, which was a Kickstarter campaign called mm -hmm. the knob. Yeah. And, um, which I use f for one specific thing, which is, you know, if, if there's a round knob on screen, like, mm -hmm. on, I don't know, uh, Oxford compressor or something, yeah. thresholds typically on compressors. And yeah. I find it's just something like, you know, okay, there it is, leave it alone. Yeah. Rather than having to, you know, do the mouse thing. Yeah. And then a uh, fader port. Uh, yeah, it's just, I, th I think it takes just a second less time each, with each uh, physical move that you're doing mm -hmm. like that. So, so you're almost time. building a console without actually yeah. having a console. A MIDI console, yeah, yeah I guess, yeah. It's very, very cool. But I mean, you've got, um, you're a Mac user, that's fine. Yeah. We can handle that. <laughs> <laughs> Six weeks ago, I probably wouldn't have been saying anything like, I mean, wouldn't even mention it. But obviously yeah. Pro Tools, you're on. Pro Tools looks like? Um, it's the latest one, should be yeah. 12.7, I think it is. Cool. Yeah. But you've got, you, you know, you've got exactly what you need, exactly where you need it, which is very, very cool. But I also see an old friend. Yes, yeah. I couldn't really live without that, to be honest. It's like everything I record here, which could be, I don't know, could be, guitar, clarinet, hand percussion, whatever really, like mm -hmm. just me banging on a table, like I use that thing for and it just sits in the mix always they are without beautiful. any problem. Um, you said you got the new one. I've just now. got the new one. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, I, don't get me wrong, I, I think the two still have a place. Yeah. Um, I think for female vocal that is just yeah. the Oh, it's, it's a beautiful sound. Yeah. But I've never really been totally happy with it on my vocal. Mm -hmm. Whereas the Mercury, 
has got something about it, a sweetness or a brightness or something slightly different. I, th I think the capsules are different and obviously the That's circuit's great. different. But It's good that they complement each other. And yeah, like absolutely. Kind of uh, and someone said, oh, you, you're getting rid of your Aria now. I said, no. No, exactly. No, because yeah. you can never have too many microphones, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> But I love the fact you, you, you've kind of compacted in and you've done a lot of work to get your acoustics right and to try and tweak the, the room and stuff. It's a bit yeah. of an odd shaped room. You've got a yeah, sort of built-in wardrobe. Yeah, and that was the problem because, you know, do you orient it that way mm -hmm. or do you do it this way? And so in the end, I had to go with kind of practicality rather than what's the best way yeah. to do it probably technically. And um, But yeah, spent a fair bit of money on acoustically treating it because I, it had a, you know, a real like boing <laughs> yeah a real standing wave yeah, problem yeah, yeah. So, but now um yeah now that's kind of i mean it's not perfect kind of over here but i know that so yeah. it's fine yeah as long as you know and do you find know. you're mixing from here as well or is, is this a kind of pre-production space I, I, ideally i would always like to mix elsewhere but you know budgets don't always allow for that yeah. so uh, i do a lot of mixing here but then you know whenever i can i'll, I'll try to hand it off to an actual mix engineer who knows what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, moving on quickly. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about your process. Um, presumably you're well hooked up with kind of directors and, and producers, people like that, in the in the film and TV side of things. Mm -hmm. Will they come to you directly with, a, with a, a gig or will it be a pitch or? It's a bit of both. I mean, I'm lucky that I, I've got a few relationships with people that I've worked with for a while and you know we've worked on stuff that has gone on to have some success. So then, you know, there's... Uh, you can name drop. You, yeah, you, <laughs> yeah. It's, well, it's all right. So, yes, yeah, so, well, for example, one director that I worked with a lot, his name is Orlando von Einsiedel, uh -huh. and, um, and the producer he normally uses is Joanna Natsagara. We did a film called Virunga, which is on Netflix, and it was, uh, it was nominated for an Academy Award two years ago. And uh, so, you know, that felt like a really solid team of people. And so then we, you know, we felt like, you know, if it's working, like, yep, it's, ain't broke. you know, so, yeah. so uh, fortunately they called me and, and, you know, we managed to do and the next project together and hopefully we can do some more in the future. And, you know, I have a few relationships with people like that where I believe a lot in that, that you, you, you gravitate towards the people that you have, you're like-minded people, right? Yep. So you have certain similar interests and, and you, certain stories resonate with you. And so, but then there's also a lot of pitching too, like, uh, if there's, you know, if your agent says like, hey, there's this cool project, are you interested in pitching for that? And I find that it's harder to get those because, you know, um, there's obviously more people pitching. And, and if you don't have that face-to-face -face, uh, thing, then it's, it's hard to, to convey what your idea is for the project, yeah. you know, and it's just purely like an, you're showing them like 10 old tracks, which you did for other projects. And you're like, none of these are quite right, but, you know, hopefully they can use your imagination that, I, I can find it, you know, but I always prefer the the personal thing. So you, you want someone to come to you because you're you, rather than um, just because you're a name in a in a. Uh, oh, these people. This database. person is good. Yeah, database. Yeah, that's the phrase, yeah. Right? I mean, that's the dream, right? Like that's what we all want. I think is that someone finds something they like in your your music and stuff mm. like that. And it's happened a few times, which is lucky. <laughs> so have you got like a, a template that you start with, or do you? Do you think do you build every project from scratch, or I would say we see a Pro Tools session behind us, and there's there's an awful lot of um, surround kind of stems and yeah. things going on in there. Yeah. So um, I do have a template, um, but I've got a section of the template that um, changes with every project. Mm -hmm. So the sort of bottom fifth of it is kind of I call it the custom part so that you I, t I tend to create sound libraries for each film mm -hmm. and so then I'll slot those and chuck those into those bits so that I tend to stay down there but then I can jump up here for like a bass drum or whatever right. you need to do and the surround thing is um, it's kind of a weird way of working and I always go back and forth on whether this is right or not but I um, I have auxes so all the VN ensemble pros come back on auxes, those get sent to another set of submixes, which break it down to stems, basically. And then I break it down to seven 5.1 stems. And the way that's, uh, and then I'm monitoring the fold downs. So it's, there's a fair bit of routing going on. And then there's like another, there's a few fold down submixes for another set of stems too. So it's, it's quite intricate. Yeah, I mean, as a, <laughs> as a, a music guy, where people start going on about, stems and think I'm thinking okay right, so so I'm about busting everything to a stereo pair yeah <laughs> and 
I would love to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I find um, people's sort of different um, different genre workflows really interesting. Mm -hmm. So, like for example, a dance music workflow where the most important thing in the track is the kick drum. Yeah. And everything then is triggering a compressor, which is pushing everything else down to get that kind of pumping effect. So that probably it, gets its own channel, doesn't it? I mean, yeah. yeah. Um, it even gets its own master sometimes. Wow. You know? um, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, and then you get get like a, a film score workflow or a, a dialogue and effects workflow, and you've got thousands of channels. Yeah. And I just look at it and go, wow. You know? Yeah, I mean, if I press page down on this, you'll see it's like, well, it's not responding now, hang on. It's just like, it just keeps going. Wow. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I get scared when I see things yeah. like that. Yeah, but then I don't always do that because sometimes you're like, okay, I did the last film like that. I'm bored of that way of working now. Now I just want to open a clean session mm -hmm. and have four tracks and yeah, really can strip do it. it down. You know? <laughs> so I go back and forth all the time, but then you miss things from each one, I guess. Yeah. It's, um, for stemming purposes, it's important. So are you primarily a keyboard player or a guitarist? A or guitarist a... originally, Sorry? but I... I I used to play trumpet in a jazz band when I was younger, but nowadays uh, I spend 90% of the time on a keyboard, maybe right. even more, 99%. So I noticed the, um, the, is that a, you, the is that a gem? Yeah, is, yeah. It, is it a gem? Or no, is it? it's, a, it's a Paul Gilbert uh, series. Right. I used to be into the, my shredders, but yep. but uh, not so much anymore. Nothing wrong with that, a good <laughs> bit of shredding. Yeah. I don't tend to make it into film scores unless no, it's something no. like... Um, it helped me get my chops going a bit, but then yeah. after that, it was, Started listening to more like you know Paul Gilbert and stuff like that. But you've got a really uh, I'm going to call it eclectic because I, I like the word um, <laughs> a really eclectic selection of stuff. Um, you're using a twin Apollo twin as your yeah. main interface because um, obviously presumably you're not recording vast numbers of tracks simultaneously. No, normally one or two. Yeah. Very cool. And you're using a trash can I see behind. Yeah. There. Yeah, it's a a uh, six core. Yeah. Right. Um, but I also see a pair of UAD satellites. Yeah, so altogether I've got, what is it? It must be, those are quads, so right. it's four, 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 right? So 12, oh no, that's two. Um, yeah. yeah, so 10, two. 10 uh, processors. Very which cool. Is good. Yeah, and I got the last, the last one recently, and because before I was, my template was maxing it all out, so I yep. couldn't actually use any UAD plugins beyond what was in my template. Right. So now it's like, now I can just kind of. Very cool. And really? I like this as well, the Black Magic. Sort of yeah, I, I really recommend that. It's not that expensive, and it's, it, you know, they, you can just swap them out. Swap, so, it, yeah. so if like, if you've got them backed up and you've got your samples on there, you can just uh, one breaks, you can just pop it back in because sometimes these things break. So, but I, I run my actual, um, it's my sessions off of that too. Off of SSD. Yeah. Yeah, me too. I'm finding. Yeah. And no one so far has complained on. So far, the drives haven't complained. No. No, I've had one once that failed for about half a day and freaked me out a bit, but then it just started working again. For some reason, you, you see all these these tricks on the internet, like put it in the freezer for half an hour and then it'll come back to life. I didn't have to do that, but. <laughs> no, I, so I, I don't think I've yet had an SSD fail on me and I've had a, quite That's a few, true. but. So what's this box? Because louder than liftoff, I recognize as, um, a company who do the color modules. Yes, and, and they the also do um, a 500 thing over there, which is the, um, uh, it's called the Chop Shop. It's right. like a tracking EQ. Right. But this is, yeah, so that's very much what they do is color stuff. And, and it's so, kind of homemade -y type um, sort of DIY recording -esque yeah, stuff. Yeah, I love that kind of stuff. And so what this is, it's, it is a mic pre, but I don't, never use it as a mic pre. But I, it's basically a color, a tone box. So right. it has a, uh, what they have as an N circuit and as an A circuit, which right. is API and Neve. Yeah. <laughs> but but um, I couldn't call it that, of it, course. I think so, yeah. <laughs> and so, um, and then there's a Baxin Dolly EQ on there as well. Right. Wow. Which slightly different uh, kind of uh, low end bumps and roll offs, and yeah. as well as how the top end rolls off. It has a vintage setting and a normal setting. And it's interesting how the API and the Neve make the EQ behave differently, actually. Right. So sometimes um, you should make a decision based on that. And you can daisy chain them as well, so API into the Neve or Neve yep. into the API. But that's a bit too hardcore. Are you someone who would get down and dirty with a soldering iron and actually start building your own stuff? I wouldn't know where to begin, to be <laughs> honest. I wish I could, but you know, I never learned that stuff. I've 
you know, I've following done a someone bit who's it. better than me. <laughs> I've, built a, I've built a couple of 500 series and wow. sort of preamps and stuff. And it, and but that's from years of making up patch bays and cables and stuff. So I thought, well, you know, how much harder can it be? And there yeah. is definitely a, a level of um, um, nervousness that comes in when you're dealing with components that are like 30, 40 quid a pop. And you think, yeah. if I stick a soldering iron through this, I'm going to wipe it out. Yeah, yeah. Um, whereas a, <laughs> an XLR has never really freaked me out that yeah. much. But everything seems to be working so far. Touch wood. And are you using them at home regularly? Yeah. Um, oh, the color module, I, I bought, um, when they did the first... Kickstarter type campaign for, mm -hmm. for the color modules with the 500 series. Um, I bought in where you buy one, you get the one for free. Oh, cool. Which I thought was quite cool. So. Yeah, yeah. I'd and love they're, to try they're that great, stuff really out. good fun. So, looking behind me on what I actually can only describe as the most beautiful piece of installation, <laughs> um, I think we've got um, a guitar effects collection that Steve Vai would be proud of. Yeah, I've collected over quite a few years now. And at first they were just kind of lying around on the floor. And if I ever wanted to use one, I kind of, I looked, I would look over and, and be like, oh, I can't really be bothered. <laughs> like, I'd rather just use a plug-in. Yeah, welcome you know? to my world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then, you know, so I said, but look, I've got all this great stuff. Like, let's build something that will make it so I can just go bam, 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 bam. So I built, um, with the help of a friend of mine called Tim, he, he uh, helped it, helped me make it so that we could make it all patchable. And I've got synths in there, and I've got some of its line level, some of its instrument level, but we've got it set up in such a way that it can all kind of speak to each other depending on how I patch it. So does it all come and up to the, the two quarter inch patch base? Exactly, yeah. And then... And each one is, is its own loop in? Uh, yes, yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. And so... But the way... I, but I almost never use it with guitar. I mean, I do use it with guitar, and I love... Uh, doing that because you get quite interesting sounds that yeah. are not guitar-like. But I use it a lot for like, I don't know, I'll run a piano through it or run whatever through it. And then I find you can give movement and sp dimension and space to it. And, and it's kind of changed the way I think of music and uh, I love it. I use it on every track. So, so you mentioned Vienna Ensemble Pro. Does that mean yeah. you're um, leaning heavily on um, so a more classical style of library, like maybe like the Vienna instruments or East West or I well I, I work for Spitfire a lot of the time as right. well. And I'm even before I worked with them I was a big fan of their their stuff. I really like their libraries because they're a bit gritty. They're yeah. they've got some It feels like there's life to to them and I love that and and so I've got tons of Spitfire stuff. Um, but yeah I have a lot of the usual suspects as well. So there's a lot of classical stuff in there, but I try to keep an eye out for all kinds of modern libraries because it's, there's so many creative like little indie developers as well that yeah. make some really cool stuff. Uh, the output guys for me yeah, have got some amazing stuff they're because great. it's I've because it, other things. yeah it starts yeah. off as normal then you start messing around with it and modulate things and patch yeah. that to that and you just go okay this is now completely a new instrument yeah almost. and I love that and, and that's kind of what the patch bay can do, the guitar pedals can do as well is take something and transform it into something completely different but it's more hands-on of course and not recallable. <laughs> yeah, uh, yes, uh, I can imagine. Yeah. But presumably you're printing that, you're not yeah. just relying on that yeah. and running it in real time. And so, you know, if someone comes along and like, hey, we love that, can you just tweak it just slightly? I'm sorry, no. man. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but fortunately that hasn't happened yet. But yeah, I love, but I, like I said earlier, I, I love to build libraries because, you know, I've learned a lot from working with the Spitfire guys and, and I, you know, even if it's something as simple as like, if you hit that, it sounds a bit like a spring, for example, yeah. you just get four samples of that. Oh, the web. Oh, no. Like this guy. Oh, of course. Yes. For yeah. example, you know, or this massive one back there. And then, um, yeah, you just have fun with stuff. And then you can, then all of a sudden you put that through a reverb or a delay or ring mod or whatever. And then that's a signature sound in your film. Or, yeah, you know, or in your song or whatever. Yeah. Or your let's say the, a background ambient noise or a, yeah. an effect or whatever. And how did you arrive at that? You can't really quite tell. You know, it's not. Yeah. It's your own, which is cool. So, are you are you are you involved with the sound design for the films as well, or is it purely just the music? And I I would love to. I mean, in reality, I it, I work uh, kind of handed over to them, but I do try right. to have like a conversation with them. Like, if there's a situation where there's something I know is going to be problematic in the mix later. I tried to call them beforehand and say, hey guys, like I'm struggling a little bit with making this a certain size, but not stepping on the dialogue, for example, and like just talking through what a solution could be and just letting them know that I'm aware of that so yeah. that like 
yeah, it's just nice to have a dialogue with them, I think. So I appreciate that at no point these days does, does is picture locked. Yeah. How do you deal with um, change? Presumably you've got a picture running at, at yeah. an early stage. Yeah, I run it from a separate uh, Mac Mini. Right. Mm -hmm. So you actually have a... Uh, and how are, you, how are you tying the two together? Are you doing it via satellite? or? I, ha I have a, 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 a MIDI... Uh, what's it called? A MIDI network going across... Um, that I, it's called like is it IAC IAC or, bus yeah, yeah exactly and then um, Video Slave uh, right. two I haven't gotten to three yet but yeah I've been using that for a while I think that guy made, made makes really good product very very yeah. good and so uh, and it's rock solid and and you can it chases as well so like if you move your cursor it jumps to the right place and I mean yep. that's a big deal otherwise you have to press space bar and then for it to catch up in yep. some of these things and, <laughs> yeah back back in the days of tape waiting for it to refade yeah. And, oh, <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, so picture lock. So yeah, I mean, a rec picture doesn't even lock and sometimes until after it's had its premiere. You know, like, so, <laughs> That's always scary. Yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, so, so I mean, you're always kind of mo moving to the last minute. But, but fortunately, it doesn't tend to be like, we're going to grab that and like completely chuck it to another part, another part of the film. It's more like the worst is when like, oh, we've lost like seven eighths of a bar or something like that. And you're like, okay. You're gonna have to work yeah, that's that gonna out work now. Well. Yeah, <laughs> but but you know we always you always find a way, and sometimes actually the solutions end up being some of the most interesting parts of the score mm. because you would never do that uh, if you were just writing music, not to picture. So, yeah, um, as long as it's working emotionally still, I don't mind the little fiddly changes and stuff. But I guess it comes down to budget, where you where you'll maybe um, get the chance to work with a, an orchestra or a string section or whatever versus a library or a yeah, yeah, absolutely. So you try to establish that pretty early on and like, um, you know, what is the budget for recording and for musicians? And then you say, okay, well, you know, so we can get this many musicians for this for X amount of time. And do we need that many? Can like, or can we use that budget in a different way? Like uh, by, I don't know, hiring in someone here for like a day to do slightly more experimental stuff? Or do you want them all in a room? Or, there's different solutions. And and then, uh, and I think it's a good thing to have those restrictions in a way because it forces you to be creative with uh, certain limitations. Otherwise, it's like you have a full orchestra, you know, use it all. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> and also sometimes, um, having spoken to many and various people, so bringing in one or two real instruments into a into a mix of um, good quality samples and libraries can make all the difference. Yeah. You put a real cello in amongst a. Um, string section. Yeah, it's going to sound a lot more real. You put a string quartet time, in amongst yeah. a load of samples. It's going to make it sound a lot more realistic. Absolutely. I, I think there's just even one one instrument. Just the the humanity of the perfect imperfection yeah. of a performance. And uh, that's because it, by the nature of how a sample library is recorded, it needs to be versatile. So you you don't have these emotional swells that you need that you can get from a giving direction to somebody or someone reacting to a picture or to yeah. a piece. So, yeah, I do that a lot. So, um, we've talked a lot about gear and about processes and about toys. Let's let's bring it back or up a level, if you will. Um, how do you deal with the whole work-life balance thing? Because you are in <laughs> the spare bedroom of your apartment in North London. Yeah. Um, now that for me would be a disaster waiting to happen. I would walk in here in the morning. I'd probably leave for two cups of tea and a and a sandwich at lunchtime, and that'll be it. My wife would never see me. <laughs> um, how do you balance off the work thing, the pressures of work, with the pressures of out there or real life as we know it? It takes some discipline, I must admit. And but in like in the place where we lived before, um, I had my setup a much smaller setup at that point. Um, literally in the in the like kitchen slash living room right. area and the separation there I mean it was driving me mental so we really needed a place where I could have a door that I can close and I'm pretty I'm pretty strict with my like kind of nine I don't know maybe sometimes earlier eight to, to seven right. kind of work days sometimes it ends up being you know I don't know eight to like 4 a.m. or something <laughs> but but that's quite exceptional and like that's when it's a deadline looming or something like that. But yeah. but I try to I try to get out of the house. Um, it's not easy. It's You've not got easy. daylight, which is definitely a bonus. Yeah. I know a lot of people who are in studios who um, that helps a lot. 
yeah, some daylight and some real life and some and some air and stuff. Yeah, because then you can see, okay, the day is over now. I should start winding yeah. up unless I've got like some crazy deadline to hit or something. And uh, I don't know, go for a run or whatever. Just any excuse to get out of the house, really. And uh, sometimes I leave for lunch because, you know, just to... It helps you think about the work, but also it gets you out of this environment. Yeah, and, and you say you're in a pretty... Um, Cosmopolitan, trendy part of North London. So yeah, it's, quite it's a, lucky. Yeah. Uh, are, are you an Arsenal fan? Uh, I am actually. <laughs> so, <laughs> but okay. that's not why I live here. It's no, just but, a coincidence. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but but it does get pretty rowdy when there's like a Champions League game or something like that. Yes, I bet. It's quite funny if you if you open the window a crack uh, and you're watching the game. You, there's like a bit of a lag a on delay, the TV, yeah. <laughs> so you can hear the goal coming before it actually about two seconds before it actually yeah. so you're like oh this is going to be a goal now <laughs> <laughs> that's quite cool yeah um, Patrick it's been an absolute joy thanks a lot it's been an absolute pleasure to chat and to just look at toys and, and talk about gear and stuff um, so thanks ever so much for having me thanks for having me I've been James from Project Expert and we will see you again soon for some more gear talk <laughs>